Oh yeah, it's it's uh, it's hard not to be right. Here we go, finally here. Got football tonight and carrying us right into the weekend. You watch a lot of football for fun. Or? Yeah, somehow it always ends up on TV. I know we uh, had a little bit of a break, uh, you know, after the last uh, preseason practice, so to speak, and found myself at home all of a sudden with college football games on. My wife's probably looking at me like you're out of your mind. So. <laughs> where, where, where do you guys go? We watch a game just for fun, not like film study. Or you know, mainly to the concepts that are happening, just things that are happening, especially like I've, I've talked about in the past with different ideas that come up in the college football games. There's, you know, I know in that the Notre Dame Florida State game, watching that, a couple couple great concepts pop. So it kind of it's hard not to, to get your mind on, uh, you know, what could be with some of those different things that you see uh, when you get a chance to have those games on. How do you feel about where you guys are at offensively going into week one? Feel great about it. Feel great about it. You know, we've had a, a good offseason program. You know, the guys did such an unbelievable job, like like everyone did around the league and, and around the country with, with the COVID times and adjusting to be able to do everything over Zooms. And then that led right into a, a good OTA period where we were actually out on the grass for those those uh, those few days there with all the guys. And then, you know, the best thing was when we showed up for camp, these guys coming in shape, ready to roll, and just hitting the ground running, picking up right where we left off. So we didn't feel like we had a, even though there's some newness to the, to the offense, didn't feel like we had to start over again and start from scratch when training camp arrived. And, and that's just built upon every one of these practices from the start to, to where we're at today. How much of an element of surprise could there be when you got a new offense, you guys didn't play a lot of your starters in the preseason? Yeah, I mean, I think that's probably a, a common theme around the league for everyone's everyone's first game, you know, both offensively and defensively. You know, there's an the element of, uh, you know, what's happening on the other side of the ball uh, after an offseason to, to look at things. So, you know, you just got to take it one snap at a time and, and see what's out there. But for us, you know, we're just we're worried about our own fundamentals and playing a good, solid, fundamental football game. How much more confident are you with Wayne Brown at left tackle? Oh yeah, I mean all those guys up front have done such a nice job. But there's a there's a presence about Dwayne when he's back out on the field. You know his confidence. He's he's been there. He's done it at a high level for a long period of time. And you know I, I credit him for being so tuned in in the meeting, so tuned in in our walkthrough periods to be able to just step foot on the practice field for the first time in a little bit and and pick up right where he left off. Russell, I think called you a wizard today when we were talking to him earlier. Um, <laughs> Hopefully that's a positive thing. <laughs> How has the relationship with Russell developed from you know day one when you got this job to now? Uh, it's been great. You know, it's just every day because we didn't have a, a, a relationship prior to this uh, this job coming about. So you know, from the very early stages where we got a chance to talk and, and get to know each other over, uh, I guess, FaceTime there, and then and then being around each other in the off season program in that same scenario to now being around each other every day in person. Uh, it just continues to grow that relationship, and you know it's an easy thing to do when you're around a guy like him that's that's in there to work every single day. And, and like I've said in the past, man, football is number one for him. He's got a lot of great things going on in, in life in general, um, but football is such a, a high priority for him that it just you know we have that common theme right off the bat, and then it just it just grows from there. How excited are you to just have your first your first game as an NFL coordinator? And call it first. Game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, hey, we've had uh, some of those dry runs throughout the years in those preseason games, but obviously there's nothing like the uh, nothing like the regular season. And so getting ready to do it, it's been something I've been preparing for for a long time, and it's been a great job. The coaches have done an awesome job, helped me out along the way since I, I stepped foot in the door here. So feel ready to go and, and can't wait to get this thing kicked off. What would be a success for you? Obviously a win, right? But what do you expect to see from the offense? Is it clean football? Is it being able to execute 80% of the playbook? What yeah, I think the first thing you said is still going to be the ultimate goal, you know, is, is to win the game and, and how that plays out on offense, being a good complimentary football team on offense. You know, every game plays out so differently and different things happen. But for us, you know, we're priding ourselves on on not turning the ball over. You know, that's our number one thing we talk about all the time in our program. So we're looking for a great effort, great competes out there and, and you know, good fundamental football. The rest will take care of itself. We got a lot of great players. You know, they, they can just relax and let and, and play ball. But you know, don't lose sight of the fact of all this stuff, all this hard work we put into it on the practice field. You know, as an offense, you'd like that to transition right on to the game field with with really no uh, no different feel or no different approach because we've been so hard on the guys and, and wanting to get to those that mental state where every day we're out here in practice, we're preparing like it's a game. What's Kyle Fuller showing you at saying? 
He's had a great command of the offense. You know, just uh, another guy that I didn't know a ton about. I know that, you know, in a couple of the crossover games, he, he had had some good snaps. And, and just the more I've been around Kyle, you know, he's able to pick up the system right away, has a good command of all the calls, gets everyone lined up, gets everyone uh, knowing where to go. And, and, and him and Russ have done a nice job with, with their relationship because that's obviously an important one uh, between the quarterback and the center. And, and the same thing with Ethan. They've done an unbelievable job. They've had, you know, maybe a few more game reps together. But those two guys have just done a great job of just commanding the offense, getting the thing set, and, and going from there. How, uh, go ahead, Bill. I just say, how big of an impact had D. Eskridge? Man, obviously, he got kind of a late start to everything, but from what you've seen, how you know how much can he do right off the bat? Yeah, he was another one that, that just did such a good job when he wasn't able to be out there of studying and, and, and getting to know things, but different than, than Dwayne Brown, who's been out there and, and played a, a ton of football. You know, for D. Eskridge, this is his first time out there. So there's still things that he's learning on the fly, and uh, he's done a great job. If there is a mistake that happens, he learns from it, and then he doesn't repeat that same mistake the next time out. So it's been great to have him out there. He, you know, he's playing fast. His, his hands are so natural when he's out there plucking the ball. So he'll be a great addition, and, and, and he'll keep working to get better and better every day. And I you know, he's got still a ton of room to grow, just like every rookie uh, around the league does. Are there a certain number of plays you like script out to, to start the game? Uh, more of a, a feel for the start of it, you know, have some of those priority type calls and then just kind of, especially in the first game of the season, just got to be ready to adjust on the fly and, and uh, have, a, have a plan that can go in a lot of different directions. Have you ever talked to current or former offensive coordinators about what their experience was like calling plays for the first time just to try to get yourself ready for that? Yeah, I think I've talked about, you know, maybe more so a little bit more in the past. I, I've done that as, as just different jobs I've been at or different places I've been, just having, uh, you know, what, what are the different formulas, different uh, coaches that I've been around have used to get themselves ready for the first game. And, and really, in my mind, I've tried to take some of those so those different things and then figure out what fits for me. You know, when you go back to, is it a total scripted openers or is it a, you know, off the cuff or is it somewhere in between? You know, just finding what, what, uh, what I feel comfortable with and what we feel comfortable with as an offense. And that's, that's the approach I've taken. What's the most helpful bit of advice you've gotten? Uh, you know, a few things, you know, is, is just just be you, right? There, there's all these different things coming and, and, and that come about in the course of a regular season game, obviously different than the, uh, the feel sometimes of those preseason games. But you're really preparing the same way you would every practice, every preseason game, just like we preach to the players. So, you know, I've had a few of those texts or a few of those uh, conversations where it's, hey, no, nothing's changing now that it, it turns into a regular season game and just maintaining that level approach. And you found during the preseason, preseason you like doing this from down on the field? Yeah, it just ended up being a, a little bit better feel as far as being able to communicate with everyone, uh, especially the quarterbacks right down on the field as, as the game's going on. And then a lot of that stems, you know, Dave Canales does such an unbelievable job, uh, you know, helping out with me and, you know, a guy that can be upstairs that really has a great view of everything that's going on. So we have a couple other coaches that will be upstairs, a couple that are downstairs. But just the way that's kind of flowed with our offensive staff has, has felt like that's the best thing to do for our team. Schematically, what are the pros and cons from like running play action out of the shotgun versus like doing it under center? Uh, I, th I just think in, in general terms, you know, it's just, you know, what's your identity and, and what plays marry up throughout your system throughout the course of a season. So, you know, you look across the, the as you, know, you mentioned college football earlier, you look across the, the league at some of the gun run teams or across the uh, the league at teams that are more under center. It's just about, hey, can you can you get a good feel of, of marrying the systems together? And uh, like everything else, there's there's always room for a little bit of everything. You, you made an Eddie better reference, I think, a couple times ago when we talked to you. So I've been meaning to ask you what your favorite grunge band is. Oh, my favorite. I couldn't hear the last part. Your favorite grunge band. Oh, favorite grunge band. I mean, Pearl Jam was pretty big right around the time uh, in high school there. So even Flo was going, all that stuff. So I'd say they're probably right up there at the top for me. I've never seen them in concert. Nope, nope. Didn't get that. Uh, didn't get that chance. Good. All right. Thank you. Thank All right. you. Thank you. All right. Thank you.